Last time we spoke, we were very certain Zay Jones would be a Kansas City Chief by the end of the, the end of the week. Because uh, fr- Thursday morning he was coming to visit us, and Friday came, and then Friday afternoon came, and then it came out Zay Jones was signing one year, four point two five mil uh, with the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, it sounds like a Veach special there with the, with that kind of money, but it wasn't a Veach special. It was an Arizona Cardinals special th- uh, this week, and JD. Uh, People online are kind of – people have floated, bring it back, Michael Hardman, uh, Mr. Walkoff. Uh, people brought uh, floated, bring it back, MVS. MVS is currently in Buffalo right now on a team visit there, so they may not be. Um, and Mr. Walkoff, I'm hoping that the walkoff is more – you know, I, I hope it actually is a walkoff. I, I hope he's walking away from the, the from Kansas City. He's, he, he served his time. He did his thing in Kansas City. He gave us a, He gave us a few rings. And, you know, I hope he can find another spot uh, because I, I think – and I'll say this. I think last year we needed a speed guy. We didn't have that. We have a lot of that in this room now. It's kind of a redundancy to have him in at this point. Um, so then you, it begs the question, Michael Thomas and Hunter Renfro, J.D., two guys we talked about last week. Um, when it comes to those two guys, it seems like Chief came, Chiefs team is pretty split on it. A lot of people say we don't need another small guy in Renfro. Yeah. And some people say – uh, Michael Thomas would be more of a more of a fit to fill the Rasheed Rice role if he's gone for an extended period of time. What do you make uh, of all the names that are being floated out there right now? And also, what would you make of us letting Zay Jones come to Kansas City and leave without a contract? Is this what you let this for? <laughs> Going out of Arizona? Really? Zay? I don't know. Listen, and I've said this to you. I have no idea what's going on in negotiations. Tyler Boyd and Zay Jones both possibly could have signed here with the Chiefs for four point some million dollars, and it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen, and I don't know why. I don't know if if, if they see something that they felt like they were you know lowballing these guys, didn't want to load up with incentives, or they just feel like it was a good fit. I don't know what I don't know what's going on. I have I have no idea. So, uh, I, and my, my thing is, at this point, Marcus, I hate to speculate. I don't even know who they're going to get. I have no idea if they're going to get anybody. We don't, we, you know, to be honest with you, they might be fine where they're at. But if we're just talking as far as, you know, the two guys you named, Michael Thomas or Hunter Renfro, Michael Thomas was one of the best receivers in the game, okay, leading receivers in the game. Uh, have been riddled with injuries the past few years. Hadn't been able to put a whole season together for the past, I don't know how long, three years maybe? You know, like a full season? Maybe even more than that. I would say maybe four. And so that's always a concern. If a guy has just been, can't just stay on the field, injury after injury, and I'm not talking about just like, you know, hamstring. I'm talking about this is like major injuries, right? Like miss a whole season type of deal. And so – you don't know what you're quite getting other than an injured player. You know he's got good hands, but can he still stretch your field? Can he still get open? Those are the things that you need to do, especially you got to play at a high level in the NFL. And so uh, I don't know uh, about Michael Thomas. Now, Hunter Renfro, we talked about trying to get him last year. I wanted Hunter Renfro last year here with the Chiefs. I think he's a guy that gets open. I don't believe that he was being utilized out there in Vegas especially with Adams and guys around him. So I think he was kind of – he was like the odd man out. They just didn't use him, and I don't know why. Um, but I, I think he would he would be a guy that could come here. He runs great routes. He's got good hands. He learn, He knows how to get open. Uh, he's a baller. He's a solid receiver to me. Uh, you could say little guy whatever. <laughs> That's what we need in this offense. That's what we look. That's what we have. Look Look to the left, look to the right. Guess what we got? Smaller guys, little guys. That's the offense, okay? Hey, how you doing? Hello, Chiefs offense. We're looking for the smaller dudes, okay? So Hunter Riffro fits the bill. Uh, I don't know how everything's going to work out with that. You know, if we're not signing Jay Jones and Tyler you know, uh, uh, Boyd for $4 million, I mean – what are they trying to do? I can only the only thing I can think of is 
that can't be true because I would have like they was probably looking for a long term deal for the Chiefs, but they signed a four year because four million, you know, just like now let's do the one and done and, and get out of here. Chiefs yeah. is like, look, man, we already got one guy like that already. We want to keep you here for like you know for the longer term. Can you do that? You know, so I don't know, man. I have no idea. I, I'm just gonna sit back and watch like everybody else. This whole uh uh thing just happened. Okay. I'm just gonna watch it because I have no idea what the Chiefs are thinking. What I thought they were thinking, what I thought seemed like a, a, a very practical decision to make, uh, a very easy decision to make. Uh, they just didn't make it. And then when I find out that these guys are somewhere else and then sign for a whole lot of money, I'm like, well, I, I don't know. I have no idea. And then it makes me just think, well, maybe they're just good where they are. Maybe they're okay with what they got, right? And they're just going to rock and ride with what they, you know, they're in the building. And I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Some people might be mad at it, but I'm, I'm not. I think they're capable of getting, through, getting it done. It's weird because, you know, in in recent weeks, so yeah, Steve Atkins trade Rice in their first and the fourth to Seattle for McHev. I think no no one's trading for Rice right now, so I, I mean, that, that's not going to happen. Maybe the draft compensation, maybe, but I, I doubt that's going to happen anytime soon. But that leads me to what I, what I wanted to bring up is the fact that we we obviously have interest in a veteran receiver. On draft night, we tried to trade. We call Seattle for DK Metcalf. That didn't happen, obviously. And then – we brought in Zay Jones this past week. So obviously they know there is a need for having a veteran guy in that yep. room. And, and, mm-hmm. and also too, not saying that uh, Zay Jones and Metcalf are the same guy physically, but those are both bigger body guys. They aren't, they aren't the smaller stature guys we're talking about. So obviously there is, a, there is a need and a want for those type of guys. Yeah. I mean, and that, that's the thing. It's like, okay, we won't offer $4.2 million for, for Zay Jones. Sure. But we are willing to take on DK Metcalf is going to make about 30 million over like 30, 30 something next year and the year after that. So it's like, there's a disconnect there. Obviously we, we, we'd be yes. willing to pay up for a guy like DK Metcalf, but mm-hmm. we're not going to pay up for one year for a guy like Zay Jones. So um, it's like, it's just weird to me. It doesn't make any sense. Me either. And then I think sometimes reports when they come out, you know, maybe they just kind of, you know, seeing what's going on, maybe seeing what they can get for a guy like this. I I, I don't know. But it doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't. Uh, you could have got a bargain deal for a, a guy like Zay Jones, who is a capable receiver, runs good, great routes, got good hands, uh, would have been able to fit in this offense exactly where you want him to fit. Veteran guy. He's got everything that you need, okay, because you got all the fast guys around you. So, uh, yeah, Rick, I got to feel like they're done picking wide receivers this year. I, 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 that's, I'm, I'm in that camp right now. That's almost where I am right now with this. Uh, not to say that they won't bring somebody during training camp in and say, hey, look, you know, this guy can still play. Even McCall Harmon, they, they might still try to do that too. They might still try to do that too, uh, uh, Marcus. But I don't know. Like I said, man, I'm right now I'm falling back all the way. I'm like, look, let the Chiefs <laughs> pick who they want to pick. You know, it's on them. Uh, but, you know, when I'm looking at the wide receiver room, I see guys in there that are capable guys. Xavier Worthy, Hollywood Brown, Kadarius Tony. Uh, we got Sky Moore. Okay. Um, we, we got guys. So Rasheed Rice, and we don't know how that's gonna turn out. So I think they might be waiting to see how that how everything is gonna transpire, too. Maybe, maybe they're like, okay, everything hadn't come down uh, down the table for Rasheed Rice yet. All right. He may or may not be suspended for the entire year. Obviously, this right here, this whole debacle with whatever that was uh, last week or the week, the half prior to that, you know, threw a hiccup and everything. Okay, could be a violation of all this. Anyway, I don't want to talk about that, guy. Lee. Yeah, that, that, so, that's a that's a that's a Wednesday topic with the, with the developments in that story. <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, my my thing is, uh, they could ride it out. They could ride it out. Um, what do you think about Steve, Steve's comment here? I think wait, I think VG's waiting for June first. I mean that that's where you'll start to see maybe some more more guys that be out there as far as creation. I mean that that could that could happen too. Sure, sure. So yeah, we'll wait June first and see how everything works, right? And if you know teams don't want to you know pay the money for guys a certain and let guys walk, 
Uh, and and it's, I, I think it that makes a lot more sense. It does. Uh, but because of the tight ends we have here, because of the wide receivers we have, uh, I think they may just be okay. They may be okay. Um, my thing is, I think I seen something up here in the chat. I was I was looking at, and I was like, "Oh, so boy, you went to where his OC got hired." Yeah, but when you're in a contention for a championship, man, why wouldn't you pick the Chiefs? You know what I mean? Why not? Uh, shoot. So. Yeah, uh, and to piggyback off that uh, as well, um, the comment boy went to where his OC got hired. I get that, but you're also right away, you're going to be the number three receiver because there's Diop there and there's also Calvin Ridley there, and they're paying big money to both those guys comparatively to your 4.5 4. mil, I think is what he's getting. So, like, they're going to, you're going to be a number three there behind those guys. At least there's a shot with us. There's Hollywood Brown, there's Xavier Worthy. Those guys have their roles. There's a, there's going to be a breakup in, the, in that Rasheed Rice uh, reps big time because he's going to be gone. If it's not the whole year, he's going to be gone at least some of the year. So right away, man, you're getting reps in a spot that you won't be getting in Tennessee. And I get he already knows the offense there. Maybe they brought maybe Callahan brought him over there to kind of teach the, the other guys the offense there. I mm-hmm. don't know, but I think there's more of a shot to showcase and also showcase for extra games too because that's also another component to this too. Tennessee's right. not making the playoffs this year. There's extra games that Boyd would be would, would would have been able to show out and show showcase to other teams to get more than 4.5 mil next year um, in Kansas City. So that's also another th- component too. You're getting four, you're at least getting three extra games. Yeah, at least, at least. So I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, and uh, you brought up Michael Thompson's missing games. JDH wanted to. I it is it's pretty rough. Um, you would think that at some point here, he, you know, obviously everyone always says that, you know, the uh, contract years, like, you know, guarantee that guys play out and it's just not the case. So 2019, he had that amazing season where he had 149 catches for 1700 yards, nine touchdowns. So following up that 2019 season, 2020, he played in seven games, 2022 played in three games, 2023 he played in 10 games. So Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not a good track record. That's not, mm-hmm. you know, it's unfortunate. It's, it's, yeah. It's damaged goods, you know, and he's, he's a hell of a player when he's healthy. He's a hell of a player. So, uh, would love to have him, but you know, it's, it's, it's how things are going. Right. So, um, uh, we just have to see, I think, you know, the June 1st is, you know, that's definitely a, a you know, a marker that you could kind of look at and like, okay, what, you know what comes down the pipe then? God yeah. went Lockett or Sutton. Uh, I don't see Lockett going nowhere. Mm-hmm. Didn't he restructure? He restructured his contract. He wants he to stay in Seattle. For life. He, yeah, he called Seattle. Yeah. He's called Seattle his home. Right. He just restructured. Yeah. It, it, no sense to do that. You know. And plus, sure. and plus two, I think with the, I think there is some legitimacy to the whole June first thing because. All right, so Renfro, Michael Thomas, and two of the hot names right now. MVS also out there visiting teams. Well, Michael Harmon. Obviously, the team isn't that high on any of those guys. So it's like, okay, let's wait to see what happens post June first. What other guys next? Right now, we're not attracted to these guys at all to sign them right now. So let's wait, see what other guys go into that pot there, and then maybe we can kind of uh, look at it again. Because that, yeah, I think there is some legitimacy to that because they're obviously not high enough on any of the guys who we're talking about. Yeah, and there's some of these people that they're talking about, like yo, John. I hear you say Adam Thielen. I don't think they're gonna let Thielen go. They don't really have anybody over there either. I mean, they got you just got uh, uh, Xavier Leggett, but you, you better keep Thielen. You better keep him. Yeah, uh, he's a, he's a solid guy over on your team. I wouldn't get rid of him. Uh, Tim Chapman, Vegas Kingdom uh, Chiefs Kingdom is always here. What's up, Tim? What's going on, brother? Good to see you in here. Timmy C. Um, yeah. So, man, my thing is uh, June first. We'll see. We'll revisit everything to see what's going on. Um, but as far as how things are, it's like scrap <laughs> scraping the bottom of the barrel. You're like, like what's all in here? You're right. Shh, shh. You're trying to get that last little taste and last little bit. Uh, but you'll have a little bit things revamped a little bit on June the 1st. Uh, so we'll, 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 we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. I will say, uh, Rick Henderson, uh, talking about the receivers compared to last year. I mean, Oh, we better. have, I mean, regardless of Rasheed Rice, we've gotten better. Um, so yeah. like 
they did check off those boxes boxes this year going to this this, this offseason. 100 percent So we, we still got KT, still got Sky, right? Yeah, Hollywood Brown and we got Xavier Worthy. We are better than we were last year. Okay. Jalen Watson is still here. Uh Justin Ross is still here. If he makes his team and makes the squad, right? And so the thing is, we are significantly better than we were last year. So almost night and day. And plus, we were talking about speed. I mean, let's say Rasheed Rice is gone week one, which he probably will be. You got Xavier Worthy, you got Hollywood Brown, and you got Kadarius Tony. That's three guys who are very fast guys, and that is what this, this this team thrives on. This offense thrives on when it's at its best. It has a lot of fast guys on the offense, and that's something we were lacking big time last year. And that's why we had to go back to the well and get McCall Hardman at the at the trade deadline. So, yeah, I'm excited to see what the, what what the speed can do on the offense again. Um, and then also too, I'm excited to see. Sky Moore, I think you can speak to this, JD, since we're talking about Sky yeah. Moore. Mm-hmm. As far as like expectations, it seems like now at this point where he is right now, how much pressure is on him? I feel like the, the pressure of that burden that he had going into last year is like because last year it was Tony, Rasheed Rice, and Sky Moore. This year it's a bunch of guys, and then we finally get to say Sky Moore. Is that does that make it easier for a player where it's like the, those expectations? What it was two years for me, people aren't expecting shit from me anymore. So, like, does that make it a little bit easier? Like, you're more like stress, not, I wouldn't say stress free, but isn't a little bit of the pressure off there? Cause, like, hey, man, like, no one's expecting anything from me. If I go out there and perform, like, yeah, I, I feel like, I feel like last year and the year before, we were, oh, man, he's a second round pick. He needs to come out and do his thing. You know, uh, KT's hurt to start the season out. It's Sky Moore's turn. You know, like, yeah. is there, do, do, do you, I mean, can you speak to that at all? Like, is there like I less can. pressure? I, I'll speak on this as a second round pick myself. Uh, you definitely have some pressure to show that you've now you've you've start to understand how everything works, okay? And you want to uh, kind of carve out your your role in an offense as much as possible. And so I think right now, Sky Moore has to remain focused on just taking care of what you can take care of. Right, don't get hurt. Uh, but you understood maybe the second year wasn't what you thought it was going to be. First year, you kind of gave it in, you know. They, you know, okay, fine. First year, you're still learning. Second year is like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll, what will we get this year? It's all about focus, and it is pressure right there. And here's the reality though the pressure that you feel for a guy like Sky Moore when you start looking at other guys ahead of you that they got in here, uh, shoot, you. If they bring somebody else, you can be gone. You can be the odd man out. You can really be the odd man out. So I think I'm looking at the stats right here. He had 21 receptions for 244 yards. You know, missed a couple of games last year for us. But Sky Moore, I think, if he gives us 40 catches, it's a successful year for him. It's a successful year for us. And so if you got a guy that you don't see coming and he's just, look, he's like, I'm just going to go to work. Everybody thinks that most people think I suck anyway. Right. I don't heard I suck. And, you know, Sky Moore, get rid of them. You know, and I, I hate when people say that, you know, because you know, they, don't, they don't understand the lives these guys had to go through and the pressures they, they deal with yep. on a daily basis. Uh, but I'm rooting for Sky Moore heavily. I hate him. I'm rooting for Sky Moore uh, heavily because he's to me, He's a guy I think can still give you something if you utilize him correctly. You don't have to put him in reverse. Yeah, put him in a slot a little bit more than what you have been doing. You know, let him do the double moves. Let him do the things that he has the strength in doing, right? That's part of his skill set. You know, the things that make him dangerous. He's got good hands. We know this. So, you know, you, you just, you, you, got, you got to put Sky Moore in, in certain positions for him to win. Okay, you don't have to have him do it all. And I get like last year because we had the seven receivers that we felt like we could put everybody in every position and just let them play. Looks great in training camp. Conceptually, yeah, that kind of makes sense, especially if this offense is a small man's offense. But then you start realizing like, hey, wait a minute. Maybe we don't need to be putting Sky Moore on the outside, uh, getting the hands put on him like uh, uh, Snead did on Tyreek Hill. Maybe you don't need to do that. Maybe we could still throw some wide receiver screens out there. Maybe sure it's a wide receiver screen that we give him. Maybe a hitch or maybe a comeback on the outside. Maybe a slant. 
sure we can do those things with him. So I think you just got to pick and choose what you do with Sky Moore, right? So when you're dissecting your offense, you got to know what guys can do. And, I, and, and look, the Chiefs know what he can and cannot do. They know that now, okay? And so they're sitting over saying, Maggie, yep, good, 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 good. Not for Sky Moore, not for Sky Moore. But these right here, he can run all these different things, and that's what we're going to do with him, okay? Hopefully a coach, hopefully Nagy, Andy Reid, uh, and Connor have went to him and said, Sky, these are the routes we want you to run. And we want you to run these well. We want you to be the greatest you could possibly run this route at. And so if he does that, I think you'll he'll, he'll give him something. He's a, he's a guy, like I said, somebody you don't see coming, like Xavier Worthy, Hollywood Brown, and a Sky Moore who you don't see coming, right? And Kadarius Tony, right? Justin Ross and everybody else. You got, shoot, everybody else around. You got the two tight, three tight ends, four tight ends. Really, you got four. Yeah, you got four guys. We we can make some. We can make some things happen, man. With this offense, we like I said, we are significantly better, even without Rasheed Rice. Yeah, significantly better. 100%. So, yeah. Yeah, Mike Brennan here. I don't know why any Chiefs fans isn't pulling for Sky Moore to succeed. It makes no sense. I mean, any any fan who's rooting against a player's downfall. I mean, you can you can may not want the team. To, you can you can may want. I don't have a word of this. You may want the team to maybe move off a guy in the future, but to while the guy's on the team to root against him, that's silly. That's silly. Well, I, I tell you what it is. The the, the reality is this. Everybody's looking for results. This is production-based business, and everybody's looking for production, okay? And they don't have any patience to, to find out what a guy can and cannot do. They want immediately success. They want to immediately start from where you play every position you play at, uh, and that's what it is. And so um, it, it, it's, it's, I don't think it's shocking. You know, people want that, okay? We, we live in a microwave world as, as anyway. And so everybody wants immediate results for this. I said this, I don't know if he remembers that, but I said that Sky Moore is a guy that will probably take longer to develop. It probably will. Yeah. So last year when he was, you know, ended up getting hurt, you know, obviously the receivers weren't playing well. When you got other guys in front of you, are not playing well, and you don't get balls that you really want, that you need, they're not utilizing you know, like, like you should. Uh, then everything gets magnified, right? All the bad stuff get magnified. Then the whole suck and all these a bust and all these different things, that's when everybody starts rolling that out their mouth. Uh, me, I'm on the ladder from somebody who played the game. Uh, Three-year project, I want Scott to, I, I want him to succeed. Yeah. I, wanted, I want him to see him do well this year. Then we have him the fourth year and all those different things. Then we can see. We can salvage this guy. Yeah. So I, I think the bar, kind of what you said, but I, I think the bar is – has been a lower for him now to, to sur surpass because, you know, yeah. second round guy, first year people are like, okay, like you said, rookie, you know, he, he shouldn't be returning punts. That's fine. Year two, after having the game winning touchdown in the Super Bowl, it's like, okay, like, is he going to make that leap now? You know, uh, Tony's hurt. Can he do it? And like you said, 22 catches, 200 something yards. I mean, he was a, he was a healthy scratch or he got, he went on the PUP or the IR the end of the season, everyone's like, wait, what, what injury was that? No one even remembers the injury. Um, and so there was kind of a weird thing there at the end of the season with him. Um, and I think people just thought that, you know, we'd get this 1,000 yard receiver from the second round, kind of the way Rasheed Rice blossomed in, in year one. I think people expected that from year two from Sky Moore. And it didn't happen. And I think, like you said, if he gets 40 catches, I think that's like the pressure's off in the sense that no one's expecting him to get 1,000 yards anymore. People yeah, think no. we're going to get more of the 22 catch for 200 yards. If you can do more than that, I think a lot of people will be happy with that in Chiefs Kingdom because I think no one's no one's expecting a thousand yards from him. No one's expecting a 90 catch guy from him. All the Golden Tate, you know, comparisons that he had, I don't think anyone's expecting Golden Tate type numbers anymore from him. So I think it's more so just doing a little bit, doing a little bit better each year as far as the numbers and stuff. Because I think the bars is lower for him now and the expectations aren't as high. So I think that's I think that's what we need to expect at this point. See, that's why I, that's why I hate people get into body types. Oh, he's got a body type like you know Golden Tate. Well, he ain't Golden Tate. <laughs> yeah, he's got more, and he's in a whole different offense. And so sometimes you know you, that's what you got to deal with. This this one ends up happening. But yeah, man, it, it, the, the bar is set low because, like you said, it hasn't been uh, produced in the past two years. So yeah, he hits him over the head for 40, 40 catches, forty five catches, beautiful. 
Mm-hmm. 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 Perfect. That's a win, right. Man. Yeah, because you're the role player. We need for you to be a role player, right? We don't need for you to be the man. You don't have to be the guy. Okay. We got two guys. We got a first round pick and a Hollywood Brown that we brought here. Okay. And a Rasheed Rice that we waiting to get out of trouble and hopefully things happen. Uh, you know, everything moves fast and everything works out for the best. But right now, hey man, you just go out there and you just play your position. Play hard, work hard, and just produce. That's it. And stay healthy. Stay healthy. So just keep your head down on the grindstone, man, and just go at it. That, that's 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 best advice I could give a guy like that, man. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, because it could be frustrating. Believe me, I I, I went through that, the up and downs of it. Uh, and it's it's nasty. Cause you you play with your own mind, right? You, you shoot, you think, well, tag on, you know, am I I'm like you've been doing this all your whole life, pretty much. And so, you know, you just gotta re- remind yourself who you are. And I think uh Sky Moore's gotta do that. So I don't know what he did to get ready coming into the draft. Well, I don't know quite know what Scott Moore is. I haven't quite looked into it. But maybe you need to go out in the cornfield or something, man, push around some bales of hay and some a tractor or something, right? And, and you know, make a movie out of it. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Get, get, get some hype behind his third year campaign. Yeah, like you just see him working out and stuff. Like, you know, Scott yeah. Moore is just focused up. Like, oh, man, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting because you, you feel like in this day, this day and age of social media where kids in coming out of high school, they they post so much things on social media to get them noticed by bigger schools. You're the guy like Sky Moore who's maybe not hasn't the best first two years of his career. You know, other than getting be seen in the background of, of Patrick Mahomes' uh, uh Texas workouts, because he's he's not like he's not like a front man on that. He's, he's like one of the guys to the side. Like, you know, let's try to get some hype behind it. I don't know whose agent is or his PR guy is. They get some hype behind this uh third year and uh maybe you know get some uh get some excitement uh behind this campaign he's got uh, oh, yeah. i like that jd we, we, i think we need to talk to his, his people and get a talk to his yeah. reps and let's, let's get a marketing campaign for him <laughs> right and so we, we so we are, and here we are mentioning this guy more and i'm seeing everybody in chat talking about Kadarius tony Kadarius tony is almost in the same boat right yeah people are done away with him he can't stay healthy you know oh you know he's he's this guy he's that guy we don't really need him get rid of him it's been a lot of that and so, you know, fans can be tepid uh, in, in how they feel about players. And I understand how that works. Uh, but if he gives you something, if he becomes just an inkling of what we thought he was going to be, then that's better. That's another role player that can operate because we have two solid guys, right? We have two solid guys. I forgot somebody said that in here. Um, man, let me see if I run down this. Ooh, y'all moving fast in the chat tonight. Robert Soraki, Sir, the new wide receiver group supposedly catches the ball, drops costs, drives and yards. Let's go. Yes. So I believe this group of guys have better hands. Uh, I said tracking the ball last year was one of our issues and problems. The deep balls, we were horrible at. Horrible deep balls. Sometimes we can even wear the ball at. The guys are turning around. I mean, it was like, it was like what, what, what the hell's going on? What is Sky it? Moore, Sky Moore had a big one. I think of the Packers game, I believe it was. Packers, uh, yeah. MBS had a few who was supposed to be a deep threat guy. I mean, it's it was rough, man. We and, and KT had a lot of uh, drops across the middle. It was it was rough, man. <laughs> we had some bad luck last year. I don't know bad luck, but you know, just a lot of bad drops. Right, right. Same man says lots of wide receivers over the years didn't really show who they were until the third year. That's true. Hey, look, man, this this is this is not a sprint. You know, it's not a sprint. Sometimes you just got to have the patience and development. It does take time for for some guys longer than others. And so, like I said, you got to have that patience, right? The Chiefs have patience enough in them. They feel like Sky Moore has everything in him. Uh, Same thing with Darius Toney. And so if you want to bring up Justin Watson uh, uh, or uh, Justin Ross, you can bring those two guys up as well. Okay? Yeah. Uh, But I tell you what. The Justin Ross difference there is the fact that he was an undrafted guy. Probably no one knew he was going to be able to play football again. Sky Moore's a second round pick. So there, there's the expectations and the bar there. Like one's like, oh, he's going to make the team. The other one's, oh, man, he's going to get a thousand yards for us. It's to- two toy. You know, it's like different expectations placed on the guys. It's where they're drafted, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. And then and somebody made a point last week. I, I think he said Justin Ross was kind of coming along, was going to get some, some, some looks and until he got into that whole situation. Right. And that, that, 
deterred him from what he needed to do. They put him on the back burner. They lucky he's lucky they didn't get rid of him. Yeah, you know, I mean, usually, shoot, for a guy like that, not drafted, and we you bringing this mess? Okay, pack your bags, buddy. All right. Yep. See you later. Hasta la bait. Uh, what? Uh, hasta la bait. Hasta, what, hasta la luego. Hasta luego. There it is. Hey, see you out there in L.A. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> my, 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 my mom's Spanish finally rubbed off on me. There it is. Hasta luego. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.